right about now. I know that in the audience there are people who I haven't seen in years, who are part of my family, my extended family, and if I don't, there's George, I remember, yeah, I see you, I saw Ann earlier, they over Kusha, that's Kusha's baby. I'm grateful to see y'all, I <laughs> thank y'all for it. I want to say first of all that um, Connecticut is the state of my redemption and my salvation, so I'm always happy to be here. <laughs> this is the place I came to as a crackhead, where some people in Norwalk accepted me into their meetings. And uh, look at me now. That was in May of 1991. Saved my natural life. Saved my spiritual life. And saved my life. And it didn't have to be so. So I'm really grateful to be here. And um, I do want you to know that I'm not an entertainer. I always have to tell people that because my son was. And he was good at what he did. But I am not an entertainer. I am Tupac's mom. And I'm here because my son left here in an unnatural way. And leaving here in an unnatural way, he left at an early time in his life. I don't um, bemoan his passing because I can look at this audience and I already know that I'm not alone. I know that there are people here who have lost their children or their brothers or their sisters. So I always know that I'm not the only one. For me, the blessing is that my son was taken from me, but I believe that because, well, I'm going to say the plus plus, I'm trying to act like I know what God knows and I truly don't. But when my son was taken from me, and you know my background, or some of it, you know, but when he was taken from me, when he was um, fighting for his life, um, Tupac left about six times. And six times the doctors would bring him back. And as fast as they would, he would go back out again. So at some point, I asked them to just leave him and allow him to leave. And I thanked God. I spent my time at that moment thanking God. I thanked him for every minute of the 25 years that he had allowed him to be in my life. Because none of us have promised anything except a birth date, a middle date, and an end date. And that is in fact what God gave to me. I was grateful because in those small years, those 25 years, Tupac had said just about all he wanted to say. There was not a day when Tupac did not speak his mind. So even when he left, he didn't leave with a word unsaid. He said it. He wasn't afraid to say it. He didn't care if people didn't like him when he said it. He was free to say it. I'm grateful that my son was free. I'm grateful that my child was that kind of a person. For me, there's a victory in that. So when Tupac was leaving, I thank God and I asked God for this small thing. I asked them to allow my child to be a light on the hill. And I sincerely believe that God did that. I think that Tupac is a light. Most people today, this is 10 years later, they think that Tupac was always um, as loved and honored as he is today. But I want to tell you that on September 13, 1996, Tupac was vilified. People didn't like him like that. They called him a gangster rapper, and they called him many other unsavory names. I believe it is because Tupac's work has spoken for him for 10 years so loudly and so clearly that it's basically impossible to ignore him. But that's Tupac. 
That's how Tupac was. You not one of Tupac's most. <laughs> I'm going, no, no, I'll be sorry. I'm going to sit down and let you do that, okay? And then I'm going to come back and, because and, and, I don't you know the gap, I have to do that in people's institution. And you may not understand how important that is right now, but trust me, in about four or five years, you're going to look around and that's just what you're going to say. But nobody built an institution. Why did those people use their money? to build an institution, which is something that lasts, something that carries culture forward, something that gives you independence, allows you to teach what you want to teach rather than what the people who are paid you tell you to teach. We are very, very grateful. We are completely uh, committed to running this institution without federal or government funds. We exist off of the back of Tupac Amar Shakur and his fans and his um, um, peers, the other people in the industry who also believe in what we, we do. So um, you'd be proud because you have an institution. And the next time you hear somebody say something negative about Tupac, you just ask them where's the institution that they built for you, okay? All right. I alluded a few minutes ago to this, but let me say it clearly right now. Did I say it? I'm a recovering addict, and that is the definition of who I am. It is so important to look at me as a recovering addict because the next time you look at the person in your family or your loved one who has this issue and you think it's over and nothing can happen and it's useless and they already only weigh 90 pounds and they are messed up about everything that they can mess up, I just want you to visualize me and to just know that I was them. I was not clean. I was just what they are, all right? So I bring that up because it is so important to me that you know that your, your family and friends and loved ones, there's hope for them. But let me tell you what my son did for me. My son applied tough love to me. So I recommend that as a description for you. It's not necessary for you to be a doormat for that loved one. It is necessary for you to pray for them, and it's necessary for you to put a wall up of safety between your family and that person. And when that person is sick and tired, <laughs> they'll remember to call you, and they'll know that you're the person to call, and you just give them the number of a recovering program that's real and serious, okay? Because it works. And so that's part of what I need to always do is to remind, because you look at me now, people look at me now, and they, oh, she's so spliffy. See, I got this tailor-made suit on. Nice, nice tailor-made fun. I got nice clothes, got a pretty smile. You know what I mean? Real laid back, all of that. Mm -mm. Was a journey to be here. I'm grateful for the journey. I wouldn't take anything for my journey right now. I thank God for being here, so let me go. Um, I completely believe from my journey, the most important thing that I have learned is that anger, anger, being mad, is a quick ticket to a crack pipe. That's how I got there. I was mad about everything for the first, I'm 60 years old, January 10th, I was 60. And for the first 50 years of my life, I was mad about everything. I was so mad to with my anger, there was nowhere else to go. That's the problem with anger. The Black Panther Party was angrier than anybody. My daughter's father is in the federal prison in Florida. 
been a fugitive since 1981 and been in prison since about 1985 or 86. My daughter now has a child, children of her own. She's a, I am a grandmother. My grandson and my granddaughter want to know why is my grandfather in jail?